Hello, good morning everyone. I hope you're all well. It's Duncan here from Trade Day. So let's catch up with what's been going on on in the markets, certainly in the last trading session as we come into this Monday. So the big one last week was obviously um, Jerome Powell at Jackson Hole, the, the head of the Fed. He had, had his chance to stand up and speak. First time we've heard from him since the last action from the Fed, which was inaction. Um, and obviously that brought about a kind of big fall in the market as, 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 as people expected a bit more. They were a bit surprised that they didn't move, feeling like they're, they're just kind of being a bit too reserved in what they're doing. So this was his chan chance to stand up and put the record straight. Now, obviously, we saw the market big panic after the Fed move, but then gradually clawed it back. And, and since then, we, the, the, the markets, the stock markets have just gone on this massive rise of appreciation, taking back all the colossal losses that was brought about by that inaction. Um, so the, the fact that the markets bounced back was great for Powell because it, it meant that he could stand up there and say, well, it's we the, the data that we're getting, we're collecting the data. And we spoke a lot last week about what we will he, won't he say, how will he manage? And I alluded to the fact his job is to support the market, guide the market into what um, he wants them to hear, what he wants them to believe. And that's, to be honest, it's pretty much what he did. He, he didn't cause too much of a ripple. He guided the market towards the fact that, yes, the Fed are ready to act. That's the big thing. That's the big takeaway from Friday. Um, so we saw we saw the markets appreciate a little bit. He, he, yes, he alluded to the fact they're ready to go, but he didn't give anything much more than that away. Yes, he is watching the jobs market. That's going to be crucial. Um, and naturally, that's what the rest of the market will now do between now and the September meeting with the, the kind of Keen eye is going to be on the, the payrolls, which come on the 6th. But there's a, there's a, a lot of data coming between now and then. And it, when at the last Fed meeting, Powell wanted us, they were trying to say, we're not going to be this data point um, and just going to be looking at the broader data. But the market will be data point sensitive. Um, and we've got a reasonable amount of data this week, some, some significant stuff towards the end of the week, which we'll come to in a minute. But the, the big takeaway was, from Friday, there was potential for, for um, well, uh, the disappointment, and he didn't disappoint. Uh, and because of that, the, we saw the uh, the stock markets rise, the dollar falls, because dollar is obviously higher rates, lower, sorry, lower rates, lower dollar, excuse me. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they pretty much rode it out quite well. A few, I listened to quite a uh, Decent podcast this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance where they had quite a few current and ex-Fed uh, members on. Uh, and yeah, the the general tone is, yes, we're ready to go, but how much and when? That's what the data is going to tell us. Now, if we see a worsening of the jobless market, we could start, we, we kind of bring 50 back into the equation. If things just steadily plod along nicely, that's what I, I would still say at the moment with the information I have to hand, I would say I think they'll go 25. They're very reserved. I don't see them changing that. I might, and I think as I went through on Friday, my concern is if they start with 25, then we suddenly start thinking, well, um, how many are we going to fit in this year? That's one thing. Powell gave nothing away on that. And is the market getting ahead of itself, expecting 100 basis points this year? Um, so that's another problem for another day, and that will come with the other data. But just going through this weekly summary, um, obviously this dominates the main part. The payroll revision was significant last week. This is an independent Bureau of Labor Statistics um, analysis of the of the um, labor market, and it came back that that what we'd seen, which was good, had been overstated by 818. Um, bringing down the kind of monthly average from 240 to 174. That's, again, that's not insignificant. And bear in mind, we are looking at the labor market. Um, I, but again, this kind of pushes the, the pushes towards the fact that the Fed will need to, to move quicker. So broadly, as I said, on Friday, stocks higher, yields lower. Um, that that t tended to be the theme. And this is just data points just showing the actual versus the... Um, with the, the actual payroll results we got on a monthly basis version versus the um, the preliminary, preliminary in the darker and the final in this more muted blue. Now, 
the big thing for this week, is the, the, well, the big two things, really. We, we've got not just NVIDIA earnings, but we've got um, the PCE inf- inflation data, which I'll, I'll come to both of them in a minute. But the PCE is going to be significant. That comes to us on Friday. Uh, NVIDIA, I'll go through sh- through with you shortly. No, from a central bank perspective, no minutes, no uh, releases. So real, just we can kind of concentrate on the on the on the macro data and the and the earnings releases. Um, but yeah, PCE starts coming to us on Thursday. We get a little part, we get a segment of the PCE on Thursday, but the main one comes on Friday. Um, I think there's US GDP on Thursday as well. Not. A, and from what I've been reading this morning, there's not a lot of talk about GDP. GDP is huge. Uh, I think it's expected to almost double month on month. Um, so obviously that's one to watch. Uh, but really a big key is this NVIDIA. Okay, so let's just move to the markets. Right. So yeah, let's just go back to PAL. We've, we've spoken about this a little bit. But, but yeah, it's when and how they're going to be doing it. This is the key. It's nicely supporting stocks. Stocks are maintaining this bid tone. Obviously, uh, in the UK, here where I am, we've, we're on a bank holiday today. Um, but um, the, the markets are generally broadly positive, and I think the futures are suggesting that too. We'll have a look in a second. Um, one other thing that was significant over the weekend. We, it's been threatened for probably about two weeks now. They, they certainly haven't rushed it, but we saw Isbra, sorry, Israel um, attack Hezbollah sites in southern Lebanon. Um, now, this is significant, um, certainly from an oil perspective, and we'll have a good look at the oil chart because it's been one of the movers over the weekend uh, with multiple reasons. Again, it's not actually reported on any of these pages I've got, up, but just not just an hour or so ago, we heard that Libya are halting oil production um, as one side of the government tries to oust and, and is pushing for a change in the central bank. So what they're doing is they're, they're stemming the flow of oil. And we'll, we'll have a look at the oil chart and see the, 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 the impact of that is obvious. You, you, you starve production, you, you heighten demand. Okay, so let's just move on. Uh, yeah, this is one of the things, the direction of travel. And he's, Powell was saying the direction of travel is there for, for a move forward. So I wanted to come back to NVIDIA coming out this week. Now, this we all know this has been one of the powerhouses, well, the powerhouse of the, of the US stock market. Um, and it, I guess it comes down to expectation versus reality. Do I think the numbers are going to be good? Yes. Is... What's what, what's the um, the downside here? It's expectation versus reality. Now, if it beats last year uh, last quarter's numbers, yet yeah, on the face of it, that's good. But what we have to look at is what is the market expecting? If it comes in just that last last month or even just a fraction higher, the market's going to be disappointed by that. That this is the reality against expectation um, scenario that we have to watch. Uh, it's expected that this will come out uh, around about the the Revenue is expected to come in around about, the market seems to be expecting to come in over 2 billion above the, the, what's expected. Now, that's, that's quite dangerous. Anything be- if, that's, if that's the expectation, anything below just 1 billion suddenly turns into a negative when it's not. I mean, they're doing well. They're, they're posting positive numbers. It's, they're beating. But it's, it, like I say, it's, it's what the, the real money in the market expects. Um, so it's like I say, it's a powerhouse. It's been doing really well. But that I think it really is one to watch this week. And it's going to be a real driver for the markets. Uh, any disappointment there could could well cause a, quite a ripple. So if we have a look into Asia, at this point, I'd quite like to go through gold. Now, gold is it's held near the highs. Um, it's, it really is coming just holding above the key level. Just, let me just pull up my trade of eight. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've, we've come up, we've tested, we've created new highs. Um, yeah, we've dipped, but we've not fallen. Uh, and just looking at this chart, I'm far happier being long of this. We've got these multiple highs that we broke through. Um, we can have quite a cheap stop loss on on this, just below all these highs uh, and, and look to push on. That's, that's certainly, I'm certainly favoring gold from the from the buy side um but let's excuse my dog 
So, but yeah, as, as, as we touched on on Friday, central banks are looking, we're seeing the dollar depreciate. There's, there's no question. Let's just have a quick look at the dollar against the yen. It, we've, we've come an awful long way um, down. So let's just have a look over a month. You can see the dollar is falling. This isn't, this isn't yen appreciation to any major degree. It's dollar depreciation. If I was to look at sterling against the dollar, way higher. If I was looking at euro against the dollar. Um, and, and as I touched on on Friday, gold is, is central banks like gold. It's a, it's a good asset to hold. Um, and obviously with anything spiraling out in the, um, in the Middle East, again, gold is a good asset to hold. So certainly on the, on the, the medium, short to medium term, uh, I quite like the gold upside at the moment. So as I say, just the DAX down, just a fraction, uh, CAC up. Um, this is showing the FTSE up, but we're not open. So, but yeah, let's just have a look at where the futures are pointing this morning. All green. Um, so let's just see what the, the day brings. We do have some data out immediately, which I'll, I'll come to. This is an interesting one. We've you know, eked back a little bit. What was this on Friday? It's 26, 74, something like that. Um, but the key thing is, I didn't. I, I didn't get a chance to look at it on Friday afternoon. I'd love to have seen how this moved, but we're just not moving. Solid central bank. So, sorry, so, solid central banking from Powell at the at the at the, at the meeting. He didn't create these ripples. Um, still, the bulk of the market expecting it to be twenty five because because and purely because we've got no reason to think that they won't. Um, and that, what will be the reason? Again, as I say. Uh, a bit of a blow up in the labor market or, or anything that is, um, insinuates that inflation isn't going the way that the Fed seem to be thinking. And they are thinking it's looking positive. As I said, I listened to that podcast. All of them were lauding how the action of the central bank had controlled inflation. Um, so anything that ripples that could be instrumental. So if we look at these reports, as we said, the, the, the yields are falling, the price is appreciating. Um, and, and again, across all of these reports, I've pre-read them, um, where the, the, the bias seems to be to the upside um, for the price and downside for the yield. And I, I cannot disagree with that at all. But there are some levels around. So do make yourself aware of these levels around. Should we should we pu um, push higher? Where could the next leg come from? What could be the stimulus for a real push on? And likewise, on the downside. Side. If we start to falter, uh, where could the market, if, when a market's, um, the, the prices have been going up consistently, well, at what point do people, does the pain point come and people start to cut longs? Uh, and and the, I wouldn't, um, I can imagine the, the level side here are, are going to be pretty key to that. So have a look through that. From um, looking at the stock markets, all of these remain bullish. It's from an S&P perspective, um, the, the, the upside continues. Look, obviously, this is going to be a key level. This previous high here, um, maybe not too far off now. Um, and in the NASDAQ, it's not too dissimilar a story. A little bit more room to get th uh, to, to get through for the for, for the upside um, to get through the previous high. And now, as I said, gold, the, 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 um, an upside bias is maintained. Uh, perhaps this one's a bit more interesting, the oil. Now, as I said, we've seen a bit of movement. Now, obviously, this was printed over the weekend. Uh, we'll come to the live chart in a moment. Um, but the, the day set up downside bias, fair enough. Not always going to get it right. Uh, but it does say, however, above 74.85, target 77, uh, and then a push on at 79.32. Now, let's look at what, what's actually played out. That obviously back through those levels we have pushed on, um, and that that is supported by obviously what's been going on in Israel, and obviously the, the what I, I, I discussed uh, relatively fresh news. Another piece of fresh news that I, have, I, I got just a push on my phone just before I came on here was that Canada is putting tariffs on uh, Chinese-made electric vehicles and um, and steel. So now, now obviously we saw the EU last week put tariffs on Chinese-based electric vehicles. So it'd be interesting to see how Tesla plays out today, uh, because this is this is going to affect them. Um, other other little bits of news for, for stocks just to keep an eye on today. We saw um, Apple 
I think it's the 10th of September, they're going to be looking at the looking to release the a bit more information about new phones, new pods, new watches. Um, as I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, but they're kind of underwhelmed with the markets with their new product. Um, we've got the new mini Mac coming, but they kind of need to just excite people again. Uh, that's what's going to give them a real lift um, as we move forward. So earnings, we've already had PDD, slight beats on the EPS and, and the revenue fell just slightly. Um, in the week ahead, NVIDIA is going to be the big one. Marvel, Lululemon on, coming up Thursday into the end of the week. Um, from a daily calendar perspective, today I said we do have some data. Yep, durable goods, um, not and not a bad bit of data. Uh, it, it can move the market. Um, so keep an eye on that. It's expected to come in around about 4.7 from a very poor number the month before. Uh, so that could certainly be a, a market mover. Um, as we move into the rest of the week, one of the, we've got Bostit speaking. I listened to him speak this morning. I was quite impressed by him, actually. Um, but yeah, he he was pushed by Bloomberg on, on what he thinks. And obviously, he can't commit things um overly but he was just saying really keeping an eye on the labor market he seemed very comfortable on inflation um but the the labor market i think 6th of september the payrolls data that's going to be the crucial one but before that we get this gauge of inflation as i said friday brings gdp sorry thursday brings us gdp uh and then and some pce data but the real one is comes in the shape of um the this sorry where are we? here we go this pc index uh expected uh, around about 0.2 uh, in line with last month but keep an eye on that it is a good inflation gauge and yeah the fed will be watching that carefully okay guys well i would like to wish you a great week ahead um a little bit of data coming out today obviously it's a monday but still the potential for, for movement so have a good day and I'll, I'll catch up with you all tomorrow thank you very much Bye bye